Hello one and all, it's Ben Ash here from Sam Ash Music. We're here for yet another live stream, this time with our very good friends from Yamaha. Now we've talked about almost everything Yamaha as of late, a lot of keyboard stuff. And as you know, with most of my live streams in general, we're talking about things that I'm not as well versed in. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Sometimes it's keyboards and I'm learning about keyboards. Sometimes it's software, I'm learning about software. But today I'm very excited because of two things. One, we're gonna be talking about a spectrum of music that I know quite well, as well as talking to a very good friend of mine from the industry that I've known for ages and who's known the Ash family for even longer than that. So let me bring on our guest for this evening, Andy Winston from Yamaha Guitars. What's up, Andy? Hey, Ben. How are you? Thanks for having me, man. This Absolutely. is fun. This is, gonna be this a is fun. One. I'm excited. Um, so why I'm excited is we're talking about Yamaha Guitars this week. Yep. And specifically the Revstar series, and we're also going to talk, touch upon the THR amps. Now, if you know anything about Yamaha THR amps or anything similar to those amps, you guys kind of created the first truly, dare I say, good portable amp. As yeah, far we're as like truly kind of the one. The kind of the originators in that space, and as we kind of we roll through the Yamaha history a little bit, we'll get into that uh, a little bit of a story about how it came to be. And it's probably almost 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago now, nine years ago, maybe that uh, THR, the original desktop amp came out. And as you can see by by the my little studio here is I've got all sorts of stuff to show you today. Can't wait. Yeah, Very, very cool stuff. So thanks for having us. Uh, and I know all of us at Yamaha are thrilled to be here, man. So thank you. Yeah, and we're thrilled to have you because speaking of which, Andy, I did say that we've known each other for years I, because yeah. before I had a beard and no hair on the top of my head and uh, a professional place in the company, I was that annoying kid with a full head of hair or no beard running around the NAMM show, playing all the guitars, knocking things over, God forbid, uh, Same and doing the same in the stores. So now the question for you is, how do you know the Sam Ash Music family? How have you been incorporated with us in certain ways? It's a long and sordid tale. And if sordid I if I tell tale. tell anything if I tell anything out of uh, out of sorts, uh, I apologize. Just don't uh, use it certain names. If, if no, 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 it. to protect the innocent and the dead. Right. Uh, I've been in the industry, God, going on almost thirty years now. Um, so I first met your dad, nineteen ninety four, maybe. Okay. Um, at, at a NAM show, um, I first went to work inside a, a company. Uh, I went to work for Line 6, as a matter of fact, 1998. And uh, Sam Ash had brought on Line 6 product, the original pod and the original Flexstone product from back in the day. Yeah, if you guys um, don't remember, the pod was that – you're talking about the bean-shaped one? The, the, kidney, the old the original kidney bean. Oh, oh yeah. Goodness. Yeah, if – okay, so just sidetrack. Yeah. If you're watching this and you're under the age of 20, you're now spoiled by how great sounds, how you can get great guitar sounds. And it's like you can do it through your computer, through everything. Back when we were kids, me, kids, maybe not Andy, but me, the best like multi-effect sounds you could get was from this tiny red kidney bean shaped thing that... The distortion now is insulting how it sounds. Nothing yep. against line six, but they were truly doing the best they could. And it was still not good enough. I mean, where we work, it was like MacGyver. They were doing the best they could. And it, look, people still use them now because it's a truly significant type of tone. But line six, as you know, if you play any of their new stuff, it's outrageous in like it's leaps and bounds from what pod go was. But you got to start somewhere. And for those of your uh, viewers that don't know, Line 6 is now part of the Yamaha family of products. And I was going to say, like, yeah. how it comes full circle. You started at Line 6, you came to Yamaha, and then Line 6 came to you. So the cool thing was is um, first kind of had some business interactions with your family. 2004, I go to Sam Ash Canoga Park. I say, I want to sell guitars for you. They put me on the guitar floor a couple of years there, have a great time. I go over to run West L.A. Music on Santa Monica Boulevard for a couple of years, end up back doing the retail thing before going back to work for, for Samson. So in 2000, 2013, Mr. John Grandinetti that was working for Samson at the time. Um, and Not with Samsung. 
But no, Sam, no, no. Sam's son. This like is the guy who had the long hair when he chopped it off. He was weak. That dude. This is that 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 brand that you can mainly get at the Sam Ash stores that really kills a lot of its competition, right? Great microphones. I'm, I'm talking into one right now. That's a Samson Q8. There's Samson stuff in my rack. So I, I really believe in it. But a couple of years at Samson that was associated with Sam Ash really got me back into the floor, uh, the flow of what was going on in the stores. You and I hooked back up again. We started doing clinics together. We started doing events together. And then five years ago, we kind of came over to the Yamaha family. And then once again, uh, Andy, do you mind going to Sam Ash stores? I'm like, hell no, let's do it. These are great people. They're almost like family to me. So anytime I can go to New York and see you guys in person and, and, and get my hugs in on everybody or go to the stores, it feels like it feels it's like, like a family. family reunion. Yeah, it, it really, really is. And that's one of the great things about this industry. And, you know, this industry is as small as my desk right here. And everybody kind of knows everybody and they know where they go around to. So you never burn those bridges. Right. So I've never burned you a bridge shouldn't. with anybody. You don't do that because your reputation is attached to it. So hence why we're sitting here at 206 or 506, depending on what coast you're in. And you and I are talking again is 30 years in the industry, 20 years associated with you guys. And I remember you when you had a mullet. So. Wow. Now, so, yeah. uh, no, that's, that's a small world. It's a so, lot of time. So as you guys have now heard, Andy and I know each other quite well, and Andy knows every Ash. He probably has some blackmail on us somewhere, so we're I'm always nice saying. to him just in case. But we it's hard not to be nice to Andy. So, look, we could talk about back and forth about our favorite foods and our favorite concerts. That's for another stream. But we're here to talk about some really great stuff from Yamaha. We got Yamaha guitars and amps. Now, you're probably wondering, and your first question is, some people don't even know that Yamaha makes these electric guitars we're about to talk about. They've been in the electric guitar game and the acoustic guitar game for years, but the Revstar is something they've been really promoting because they make a fantastic guitar. Actually, just for this live stream, just to show you that I too am a Yamaha fan, I've got my Pacifica, and I love this thing. Got that soap bar pickup. We're not talking about this. I just wanted to say that I'm a fan of Yamaha guitars and I have one. That's It's that simple. Oh, I could show you my Pacifica that I got. We did a limited edition run for our friends in Canada. Two P90s. I have one of the last ones. It's so good. It's so good. But that's another story. But thanks for showing that. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, I have to. I have to give some credence to that. So great guitar, okay. great guitar. Uh, so let let me just kind of reel back the story a little bit before we kind of get into some product stuff. A yeah. lot of people don't know the Yamaha history, right? Uh, yeah, go for the history. They know the name. Uncle Bob's got a Yamaha outboard on his bass boat. Uh, some people don't even know that we're in the guitar business. I, I still get questions every day about, I didn't know Yamaha made guitars. Yeah, we do. So 1886, Mr. Torakusu Yamaha repaired a neighbor's foot pump reed organ. So a little tabletop reed organ. This was in Japan, late 1800s. The Yamaha Corporation first product that came to market was a foot pump reed organ. So once again, our first product in the market, 1886, was a musical instrument, right? People might know us from the motorcycle division and, and boats and water ski, all that other stuff that we do. But the first product that we do did was actually a foot pump reed organ. So it was organs and then into, into pianos. The first instruments were imported into America in 1966. And that's kind of an important date for us. So 1966 is the first FG-150 and FG-180 acoustic guitars. The very famous red label guitars from back in the day. And the very first electric guitars, okay? And kind of in the, in the surf era of those, those, that SG-1, SG-2 era of guitar, which is very, very cool. The very first famous photograph of a Yamaha guitar that was kind of seen around the world was taken at Woodstock. Uh, and it was Country Joe McDonald, right? Country Joe and the Fish had a famous song called F the War, right? Um, the story was that he arrived on stage at Woodstock, but the band and the equipment was stuck in the traffic jam and couldn't get to the venue and couldn't get to the stage. One of the roadies or one of the stage crew that day had a Yamaha FG 150. 
Country Girl Joe was able to grab that guitar and then stand on stage in front of 300,000 people playing a Yamaha, singing his anti-war song. And then that photograph, I think it was in Look or Life magazine, and that was kind of seen around the world. But that was kind of our first famous foray um, into uh, American guitars. But so there's a long history going back to 1966 with both acoustics and electric guitars, um, basses as well, right? We're kind of famous in the bass world. We've got some famous bass players, Billy Sheehan and John Patitucci uh, were doing um, an anniversary Billy Sheehan bass. And there's a Peter Hook bass coming out, which is very, very cool stuff. But people don't know that guitars were kind of came out of that bass world so let me show you something that i've got here in my hands 1981 yamaha ev 300 look at the flame maple on this thing it's it's absolutely incredible this was a sam ash find thank you sam ash doors that i get to visit all the time for 279 dollars so I had to, I had to take it home, had to take it home. And the cool thing about Yamaha basses were kind of legendary in that world. It's almost, you can say Yamaha bass to somebody and they'll recognize that as being an industry standard where they still might not know us from the guitar world, right? So the cool thing about Yamaha basses is, yes, they're available at Sam Ash. Yes, they're available in the stores and online. Uh, two different series now, right? So TRBX basses have a sculpted body, a little bit of a thinner playing neck, right? We almost call it a hi-fi bass or more of a modern bass, right? Um, the thumb style player loves TRBX. Um, Abraham Laboriel, one of our legendary basses on our roster, he plays a stock TRBX 505 bass, right? We don't even make anything fancy for him. And then we just reissued and reinvigorated the legendary BB bass series, right? So BB was that bass that had been on the price sheet, I think, since 1979 or 1978. Um, and it gone through different connotations, like right, like the BB 300 we see behind me. So and it was, that, I don't mean to interrupt. But, please. Uh, I wonder where you went. I didn't know if you had, if you went to the restroom or no, something. I'm, I'm My God. And being as as possible. <laughs> uh, one of our uh, viewers, Paul said, funny enough, he wants to know if there's going to be a reissue of the BB 1200, like Paul McCartney used while in wings. So I figured if you're talking about the BB series that I don't know if we're going to be seeing the 1200 again. Is that Paul, a that's a that's a great question. I I cannot divulge what is on the kind of that five year and ten year plan of of what we're doing with BB, but I can I can tell you that there's a lot of growth and some there's some model changes and stuff that's happening. Um, whether it'll be labeled as a BB twelve hundred or will it have some of those specs, um, I can neither confirm nor deny. But one thing with Yamaha is we're always kind of innovating, right? We're always looking to the past to kind of give us that true north to what we're supposed to be doing for the future. So, Paul, thank you for your question. I really, really yeah, remember that Paul McCartney actually played Yamaha basses for, for a good while of, of his wings there. That's a great, great question. Uh, some other comments we got is Mariano's just saying he has a BB 2024. And then you have uh, Evan saying he wants an RS 502 in gold. There's and, still out. Yeah, good, good call, man. That's a, that's a great call. And then Paul wanted to say not to be confused with bb8 <laughs> but now i kind of want to see you guys making a white and orange base called the bb8 you're not you're not saying anything about star wars you're not you're just it's just gonna maybe it'll be orange with white pickups or something like that it'll be the bb8 model and sam ash exclusive but maybe who knows that's what happened it could happen. It, it, you never, ever know. You never, ever know. But thanks for your questions, everybody. Really, really appreciate it. Like I say, BB's got this long history. Um, but what's cool about the, the new ones that we have now is we've slimmed down the body. We've slimmed down the headstock. We've removed some of the weight to it. Um, we've gone to a traditional pickup route. So now if, you, if you're a fan of Seymour Duncan or or uh, TV Jones or another manufacturer, we don't get offended if you want to pop their pickups um, into our bases anymore. Uh, and the cool thing about it is they're lighter, they're a little easier to play, they're very well balanced, and they're priced from about 
two ninety nine up to the Japanese one is is well affordable now. No longer is it a three thousand dollar investment to buy a handmade Japanese base. You can actually buy it online. I think we're going to have them on samash dot com, and they're probably hanging in in quite a few stores right now as well. And that kind of leads us Ben to to Revstar, right? Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is yeah, what now. There's an. I remember you telling me why they're called Revstar. What is inspiring? Not only the playable the playability and sound, but literally the look of it is inspired by why it's called Revstar. So if you could break that down for some of us who have no idea what that means. Um. So the, there's a little bit of philosophy behind it, which is which is interesting for for us in the guitar business. Um. We wanted to kind of market it and do something a little bit different with it. So if we kind of remember those first advertisements that came out that said, meet your other half, it was a little more edgy. It was a little more lifestyle and not necessarily an, uh, an ad that would end up in a magazine that would, would show up in our mailbox, but it could be like in a ski or surf magazine. Um, but the, the story was, is that we needed to have a 24 and three quarter inch scale set neck style instrument on our price sheet. Now, wait, wait, wait. Now, let me explain. Yeah. Now, for the novice guitar players, why is that important in general? What is that to, as compared to other guitars? Because, like, sure. I understand that. Go why? behind you, grab the Pacifica. So, the Pacifica behind you is a 25 and a half inch scale length. So, if we go from the bridge saddle to the nut up by the headstock, that's kind of a standard length for those types of guitars. And that's 25 and a half inches. Okay. So Revstar is a little bit different for the fact that from the bridge to the nut is more of a Gibson-y scale length of a 24 and three quarters. Okay. Those are in your electric guitar world. Those are your two major scale lengths, right? Um, being that we'd been in Pacifica for, for, uh, 10 years, 12 years or so, we needed to have something on the price sheet that was set neck, right? So the Which neck is, is actually glued into the body, right? right? As and opposed that, to a bolt, yeah, as opposed to a bolt on. But it makes it so that it's easier to access the higher, the higher frets. Yeah. Well, you can see that double cutaway. It's like, look at, look at, you can get to that, uh, up that upper fret just easily, very, very easily. Um, so the, the story was, is, well, let's let's make this style guitar again. Let's do a, um, a twenty-four and three-quarter scale set neck. Well, what have we done before that we could use for inspiration um, to get us to the future? Right, because we're always kind of looking to the futures, the customers' need that feeds our our drive. But it's the history that we come from that is engaged us and enlightened us uh, and inspired us to create new products. So what we did in the 70s, and I think it was a period for about three years, is we made a series of guitars called the Super Flighter, right? Super Flighter, SF5, 7, and 900, if I remember the models. Don't quote me on that. But what it was, it was a double cutaway. Two humbuckers, right? Two pneumatic, um, set neck, right? So we glue the neck into the body. Um, and once again, as we we have a great habit of making stuff for a few years and then and then discontinuing it. So Super Flighter ran for about three or four years. But what we did is we looked back, took a little bit of those design cues. Right, kind of made that a, a little sexier. Added the body contour, added the arm contour on the upper bout. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about this. Oh, this is kind of a cool trapeze design. So, what we did is we wanted to come up with this new design of the guitar. Oh, Yamaha makes motorcycles, right? And we make some pretty darn good motorcycles. So that lifestyle of the 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 what they call the cafe racer, those kind of low slung motorcycles with the the small fairing on the front, and people would race from bar to bar and try to avoid the police. But it was a whole subculture in Tokyo and in London where um, these people would customize their motorcycles. And one of the things that they would do is they would knock the chrome and the shine off the motorcycle, so they were not as easy to see 
Okay. So the cool thing about that is like not shiny, kind of fl not flashy. So what we did with a lot of this, and you can see it on the front of this, is it's a hand rubbed satin style finish. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. So the one I'm holding up here, in fact, we'll get to this point right now. This is your Sam Ash exclusive. And you know what I love about it? What color is it? Ash gray. Oh, yeah. that was Come on. Ash gray. It couldn't be any better than that. I don't know who thought that up. If you did or Bruce did oh, or to be fair, that happened to be the name of it. And then Yamaha what? offered it up as the exclusive. So we were like, it's, it was made to happen. So the so. cool thing about this is it's a mahogany body, right? Right. But you got that weight and you got that heaviness and you got Ma that maple cap, right? You can see the binding on the top flame maple top, but with that satin finish, I think is just, is just sexy. It really, yeah. really looks cool. Look at the trapeze tailpiece was actually designed by our motors division. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, we asked them to kind of help us with some of these design cues. They kind of came up with these paint schemes, uh, came up with the hand-rubbed finishes that we're doing on the eight, uh, 820 and above. <clears throat> but also kind of said, well, can we design some stuff? So that actually came out of their design design cue right there. So the trapeze, or I'm sorry, the trapeze with the tunematic. 24 and three-quarter scale like we talked about before, but the cool thing about the um the 500 series and upright this is a 502 24 and three quarter scale length 13 and three quarter radius on the fretboard so it's a fairly flat fretboard um what i like about it though if you are a shredder yeah. i mean some people have their brands for shredders but you can shred on this thing that's basically i'm trying to translate for the non-guitar uh tech guys that are out there that just play and don't know the deal but yeah, if you want to shred on this guitar, it's very comfortable to shred on. And very flat fretboard, like like Ben was saying, but we put a jumbo fret on it. So the cool thing about that. <laughs> bending strings on a Revstar 5 series is absolutely effortless. I'm never grinding into the fretboard. All I'm doing is kind of dancing on top of these jumbo frets. Especially if you have big hands like me. Yeah, so this actually, and, and it's a little bit of a thicker neck too. So um, let's kind of break down the series a little bit. And, and all of these are available online, right? We just checked the website. We checked our open POs. We're gonna make, we're making sure that there's inventory available for you guys if you're so inspired. So I meant to tell you, and I don't want to interrupt too much. Yeah. We have, uh, this is just a nice compliment from Paul. He's been chatting, chatting it up on the comments. Uh, he wanted to say, when he worked at Sam Ash, which he happened to work at the City of Industry, aka the Twin Pines Mall for Back to the Future fans out there, um, I'd almost always recommend a Yamaha to a first or 101st time buyer. The entry level guitars always impress me. I think I sold dozens of the entry level guitar packages. So that's a testament to one of our guys um, because these are just like from beginner to extreme. Whatever guitar you get from Yamaha, you're getting a quality instrument. Um, and the one one thing too, and we'll we'll kind of talk about that for a second. I always think, and I always thought this too, all in my time that I was not working for Yamaha and selling Yamaha in a retail environment, I always felt as a salesperson, I was giving my customer more guitar than what they were paying for. And that's how any that's ev what every customer dreams for. They so want that's where yeah, so I, getting more bang for their buck. So I think it's easy to suggest us, especially at that 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 lovely 199 299 399 price point is i think you're getting guitar that's actually worth twice that value we just have them be very efficient uh, at making them and we know the price points that we want to hit with them so in a partnership with with people like you and then you know former sales guys like paul um yeah there's a lot of people that started on yamahas me being one of them so my mom <laughs> Before my mom passed away, she gave me a big box of photographs and she said, you're going to have a ball with this. So there's a picture in there from 1977. I have got hair down to mid shoulders and I bell. Know what you're talking about because I think bell, your face yeah, up. and those giant bell bottoms and I'm playing an FG 75. So after a couple of hand me downs after a Kent and a St. George that neighbor neighborhood kids gave me. My mom said that you'd look pretty serious about this. Let's go to a music store and get you a real guitar. And that salesman sold us an FG 75. So 
it's kind of fitting that I'm back here again. There you go. It all starts somewhere. But let's um, look. Let's, let's break down this ref star thing real quick. I'm kind of keeping an eye on the question. This is just yeah, go. No, Paul wants to know any stainless steel frets on any guitars coming soon. Yes or no? Maybe so. Probably not. And the one reason being, it's it's not price effective to do from the factory, right? It, it's almost. Uh, you, again, you're saying bang for your buck. You want to make sure that people can afford the guitar and get the most out of it. Once you put on stainless steel, you, it goes through the roof. And you kind of, you really, you know, stainless steel frets three to four hundred to five hundred dollars to have a luthier put them aftermarket. It probably costs us three to four hundred dollars to put them on a guitar plus the, you know, and the labor included in that. But that's a great question, Paul. But that is a very good question, Paul. Um, and, and and I should, when we get, we're going to get right into it, but Ask us any and all questions. We're happy to answer them. That's what we do with all of these live streams. This is an interactive show. As you've seen, we're happy to put your questions on the board. We're happy to take your comments and put them on the board, so to speak. And we want you to engage with us, us engage with you, while I'm engaging with Andy and so and vice versa. This is a fun show. Let's talk guitars, guys. So that being said, Andy, let's talk guitars. I just embarrassed myself by telling you that I wore bell bottoms that, you know, and had oh, hair way down hey, over my shoulders. With regrets from their past, you're the <laughs> only person I've ever heard with that. I wore Chenko jeans. I mean, <sighs> we all wore an embarrassing uh, article of clothing at one point in our lives. I had embarrassing hair, embarrassing clothes, embarrassing mm -hmm. taste in lots of things. So don't worry about it. You are in a huge group of people who wore bell bottoms. I'm in a huge group of people who wore Jenko jeans. So for your youngsters out there, it, it actually gets better the older you get. Yes. A Le little less embarrassing. And you get to um, wait for the younger generation embarrass themselves in new ways. <laughs> like, just take it from me. I'm watching TikTok videos all the time, and I'm like, oh, boy, these kids are going to regret these in about five months, let alone five years. Anyway, guitars. Not take Good. guitars. Guitars. Um, as we were checking out under kind of our pre pre show warm up that we did, is we checked the website, made sure that there was inventory in stock. Um, there's uh, seven different models in the Revstar family. The first two, the RS three twenty and four twenty, have a slimmer neck. Let me hold this sideways a little bit. Here, I'm gonna pull up our page. Yeah, do that. that way people can see. So the three twenty and the four twenty have a little bit of a slimmer neck this way, and come with a smaller fret wire. Now we did that for a couple of different reasons. We didn't want to make everything with this kind of a little bit of a thicker neck with a jumbo fret, but we thought at that price point, um, our that might be our entry level guitar player. Yeah, there you go. There's the RS three twenty in that black sparkle finish. I was just saying, got seventeen go. seventeen bucks a month. Yeah, that's if you do this financing. So that's what's great about this is because it's over two ninety nine, you get uh, twenty four month financing. So it's about the price of like a subscription service like Disney or Netflix or Hulu or whatever millions of them. That's three trips to Starbucks, kids. Buy a guitar instead. That's two trips, if anything. Yeah, make your coffee at home and buy more guitars. I also but want to reiterate, uh, yeah. something's weird with our site right now because I just talked with the Yamaha people before. It says items out of stock. Most of these are actually not out of stock. We do have many of these. You just have to call and find out um but yeah something i don't know we tried updating the site that's on us but either way if you're interested in anything you're seeing 99 percent positive we'll have it in stock and then the 420 420 is the step up from that and when we get to the 420 we add a couple of features so what we're doing is we're going to do a mahogany back with a maple top but the big thing that it gets and i don't know let me hold this up to the camera is you get this nifty little Oops, sorry. Push pull pot the, right here. There we go. So you get, uh, you get this nifty little yeah push pull pot, which we we love, <laughs> which is actually a base contour. We called it a dry switch, and and my philosophy is it doesn't dry a darn thing. If it's humid outside, it won't help you. If the towels aren't drying in the dryer, it will not help you. But what it does is when I engage the switch and pull it up, I actually at about 500 hertz or so a little lower than that it really drops off my frequency at about a thousand hertz it drops up by about 8 db so what i can do with that humbucker guitar like you just showed uh ben on the 420 and the 620 720 and 820 that all have the humbuckers i can roll off a little of that bass but still keep the grounding of the pickup 
we all know a split humbucker never sounds as good as like a really good single coil pickup. So by just by do, doing a little shaping, by rolling off a little of those bass frequencies um, with this dr dry switch, uh, we can get there, but still keep that grounding and eliminate that 60 cycle hum. That's on all humbuckered models, 420 and above. So let's definitely make sure I want to hear that. Yeah. The before and after when you when we start talking about the amps but let's make sure we're talking about all the things we see about the guitar before we start playing it through the amp and start talking about all the amp stuff yeah so what i if you so let's go back to that screen share because what i love about this is that you they're all similar yet different so you're not like some brands you're get if you may go from model to model and it's just such a drastic shift yep. but usually with these i'm seeing it's maybe the selection of colors, the type of cap, the type of back. So if you, it's kind of easy to pick the guitar that's perfect for you from Revstar after just talk, you just talk to an associate or someone from Sam Ash and go, I'm looking for something with this color, these kind of pickups with this kind of bridge. And there's a good chance to go, oh yeah, you want the, uh, the S420, the S620, uh, or excuse me, RS620 or RS420. Yep. But it, what's great is also if you look at the prices we've got nothing's exorbitant i mean especially for the holidays you can get a really nice guitar starting at 400 dollars, and still if you want to get an like a deluxe quote-unquote guitar like the s820 cr yeah still right before it's a penny under a grand so you're not it's not like some brands where their guitar ranges from 200 to 2000 3000 and you're like oh now i gotta go through seven thousand different guitars to figure out which is mine no yep. Rev star makes it easy we've got nine great guitars i mean even if you didn't get the exact guitar you wanted there's a very good chance you will play one and enjoy it i've played these and they're great the only reason every every pickup is every pickup is different so um these all the pickups were designed by ygd which is yamaha guitar development kind of our custom shop people okay. so what we did is we voiced each pick up to match the guitar right we've got a guitar there with bixby we've got right that does p90s just different. absolutely kill they're so so good um we got ones with a little bit more vintage of a sounding pickup so it's nice to have you could have five or six rev stars in your collection and they would all kind of sound a little bit different play a little bit different i mean i you're you're talking to a guitar collector so like to tell me that i need one per brand is insane everybody everybody knows you need there's like an, a, a joke equation, like the amount of guitars every person should have is X plus one because you never have enough guitars and you're always getting more. I mean, I'm not going to point out brands, but I've got multiples of many brands. Yeah, I, of course. Yeah. The only reason I don't have a Rev Star in my collection is because my wife says you can physically cannot get <laughs> more guitars. Because, And honestly, I love my wife. She loves that I have guitars because it makes great wall art. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. have them hanging in this room per se, but outside I've got like a bunch hanging. If I can get more room and more hangers, she'd let me take 30 guitars home or something. So one day I'll have a rev star. It might be the ash gray because of how appropriate the name is. But, <laughs> uh, and who knows? Maybe I'll have multiple rev stars in my future. They make a great guitar, guys. I'm not being biased. This is, I would say this if this wasn't the live stream. And I what I and what I love about it, Yamaha to me it's kind of punk rock. To me it's kind of it's it's cooler to play what you like and play what makes you feel like your voice is being heard through the instrument rather than necessarily what the headstock's telling you you should be playing. Also it's right? it's the gone are the days where if your guitar looks like it was made up of broken logs that was punk rock. Now you actually if you want to be like sound badass on an instrument you got to have a badass guitar. You can't have one that is falling off the wall of a pawn shop anymore. Brandon, as much as much as I love those, as much as I've got closets full of them, I don't they take them on them. stage. They better play right. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing. Something can look cool, but sound like garbage. So these happen and look great and sound great. So, um, but anyway, we can well, let me roll on into the amplifiers before we, you and I will talk for hours. I know that because that's what I was know. afraid of, honestly. <laughs> We're just going to, we would talk for hours. Okay. So, what you're, yeah, what you're kind of hearing the guitar get being played through right now is back here. So, what we have, and Sam Ash has this online, and let me see if I can. That's the THR 100H Dual. 
and the THR212 cabinet. So the, the THR100H dual is available on samash.com. You can get financing too, which is very, very cool. But the cool thing that I liked about this, this spawned out of. So forgive me, which one? Yeah, please, please. That I have here. Uh, that's the straight up above you. That head. There you go, right there. Okay, so that way we can have a side by side comparison of the features, so I can point them out. Yeah. So, so that fun. first that first came out of here's the first THR. We'll talk a little bit about the history of that, but you know the first thing was is when the original THR came out is like my stage customers couldn't take it on stage, so the THR 100 came out of the the need to be able to take THR flexibility and be able to put it into. Um, this head weighs nine pounds. <laughs> There's no power transformer in it. It's digital. It has XLRs out. That's why I'm feeding the board down here. I, I should have, also say, yeah. you said the D word, which can deter a lot of people. The word don't D be, word. don't be. Yeah, I, don't I be. when I first heard about, it, I was like, oh no, another digital amp. This yeah. thing is a monster. Like, yeah, don't you put don't this on your desk, and your Marshalls and Fenders might start collecting dust. So what I do is when I gig, I take this, I take this as my gigging amp, right? I take this and I take the 212 cabinet, put the 212 on end so I can be next to the kitchen door wherever I'm being stuck next to it. Right. I, remember I, I used to gig. It seems like a, a while ago. For all of us. Yeah. But the cool thing about this, it's basically two amplifiers in one box. I can have a nice clean side. I can have a dirty side, right? So I can actually do it uh, like a clean, clean, dirty sort of situation. But this amplifier, if I hit this next button here, allows me to put both amplifiers on at the same time. So you're talking about, right? So, you know, Joe Bonamassa's five for six amplifiers, right? right? Right. Stevie Ray Vaughan was at least three. He had the Dumbbell and the Vibralux and, and, and the Marshall all on. So they know the benefit of having a wet, dry or a clean, dirty. So that's to me, why, So this is that switch right here that I'm starting. Yeah. I okay. leave that in the center and then I can do all of my switch, all of my switching here. So uh, that's your included foot switch that comes with purchase. I have an assignable booster so I can tell one, what channel that I want to boost it and give it a level check here. Reverb on off. I have a series or parallel effects loop in the back of it oh, that I can access from that. I didn't even know there was that kind of feature. So, and here's the, we talked about the D word, right? We've got it in stock at seven ninety nine. Only a few payments. This is with the back. Now, panel. Oh, okay. Oh, Leave that back panel up. Power sections too. Yeah. So I've got tube modeling. I've got I've got class A, class A B topography. I still have a headphone output. Right now, I'm plugged into the cabinet, but what I can do is I can reach back there, unplug my speaker cables, and run direct, right? There's no transformer. It's a D word, right? It's digital. So I don't need, I can't hurt it by not playing it with speakers. So I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing not only power sections, and speaker options, and wattage options, and line outs, and yep. ground lift, and headphones if you want to jam in quiet because your neighbors hate you or something. Yep. You got the speaker out. You've got the effect loop, which is awesome. If you want to get like a chorus going through there, great foot switch, but USB. That mm. is so, so via you via USB, as I can go into the edit the editing software that that we can download, change my um, noise gate, change my booster type, uh, change my reverb type. So it's more, you get bonus features and I'm assuming it works as an interface? Um, it can, yes, exactly. So I've actually have this hooked up to my Steinberg and if I fire this up and plug into it and then fire my Steinberg up, it says, are you using THR as your interface? And you click on yes. That's so this thing's great studio amp, great live amp, great practice amp. Um, and the thing that gets me is a, a $34 a month, Ben, how do you do it? I mean... Literally, yeah. if, if a dollar and change, if you saved, if you put a dollar and change in a little piggy bank every day, you'd be able to afford this in two years. 30, that's a, that's a dollar a day, kids. Come on. Like the old, do it. Like only a dime can make, or yeah. the, the, would, would you like to help someone like me? 
Now you guys can help Andy Winston for only a dollar a day. You too can afford a THR. You can you can see I'm so skinny and I I need a meal. Exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, that's, that's THR 100. I love this for the fact that that sprouted out of our desktop, right? Now, wait, forgive me, because I think yeah, go a glowing feature you didn't mention about this. Yes, it looks like an amplifier head. But mm -hmm. what can you do that most amplifier heads can't do? Yeah. It makes sound. There is a built-in speaker in this bad boy. This isn't just one of those things where you have to put in a cabinet or you have to put in headphones. You have those options, mind you. But if you literally want a literal desktop amp, an amp you can put on your desktop and jam to, this guy does it. And it sounds good. It's well, not, not the head. Not not the head that we're looking at right now, Ben. That head doesn't have a speaker in it. That, you can run headphones out of that. Wait, wait, wait. You, now I feel real stupid. Uh, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> wait, so this doesn't have the speaker out on this? No, no, no. That, those are vents. Come on. That, that's, re that's where our real tube illumination comes from. Okay, so at least I can... Okay, so... Dive. XLR out, headphone out, speaker out. Everything I just said for the past <laughs> one. But, but you do have these. Some of these do have a built-in amp, right? Oh yeah, we're gonna get there right now. So let me let me reel back the years. So once once again, ten years ago. That <laughs> ten. It's okay, my brother. I'm here for you. Printed up in music trades and everything. Ben Ash doesn't know the amps he sells. He's drinking on a Thursday oh, evening. Come on. Um, as we reeled back to the when we first you and I first started this, um, Yamaha was kind of the originator of the desktop amp series, right? About 10 years ago, the original THR, which is still available in some way, shape, or form, as you can see on the website there, um, was the first desktop amplifier, right? Show us again. Put, put, your ba put your batteries in the bottom, put your guitar in the top of it, some programmability, built in tuner, nice handle on it. Super Looks lightweight. Super lightweight. Super lightweight. I have kind a lunchbox of, that's heavier than that when I fill it up. With yeah. Them. And now everybody's kind of playing in that space. So we needed to uh, up our game a little bit. So let's welcome to the family THR2. Okay. So THR2 is now, let me put the guitar down for a second. By the way, we have our friend John or Jan or Jan, forgive me if I don't know, depending yep. on what region you're from. He has all the lines of the THR series. Very big fan of Yamaha amps and guitars. So thank Thanks, you. Brother. I'll refer to you as Jay to play it safe, but thank you, Jay. <laughs> so let me kind of find out how, how am I doing here. So the cool thing about this now is look at this little switch. So forgive he, me, I can also pull up a picture. Um, is this the THR 10 2? This is the THR 32. Got it. Okay. I've got okay. the photo. So that way, if you want to manipulate, I can show the yeah. audience what we're looking at. So if you remember um, our original THR series, our THR 10 came in three different flavors, came in a tan, a blue, and a green. Each had di different amplifier models into it. So as you can see by this nifty little button right up here on the front, now what we've done with the THR second generation, you're getting all those amplifiers in one amplifier in one box now. So I don't have to buy three different amps to get the three different. Uh, so now I have 24 sounds right from the face of the unit. I have my programmability, but now I have Bluetooth. So the Bluetooth gives us some cool capabilities. I can do a uh, Bluetooth uh, channel switching. I can also do run this cool little app. So the cool thing about the THR editor app is that it'll do, let's see if I can get this to look right. Oop, there we go. Do, 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 do. As I do my presets on, on the amplifier, you'll see the app move. Now, what I can do is that if I do presets, right, because I've got memory on the THR, I can actually manipulate this live. I can also, let me hold this up a little bit. As you can see, what we're doing now is we're giving you, if I activate the echo, I now get, oh, the guy that looks almost like uh, a stomp box, right? I have five controls rather than just kind of that graduated control that's on the face of the instrument. Very, very cool stuff. 
So this has to do with this new THR that we just came out with. Now we have editing a, a, uh, applications. So I can do a lot of stuff via online. I can share my status. I can assign different amplifiers. I can reamp. It shows me what my battery status is. USB out, guitar out. Very, very cool. The other thing that we did with this, Ben, is... Um, do, 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 do. As you can see on the far right there, wireless ready. Well, what in the heck does that mean? Look on the far right of your screen right there, everybody. Wireless ready. Well, our friends at Line 6 helped us out with this, okay? Um, this has a built-in Line 6 G10 wireless receiver. Oh. It in the unit that's cool so you can really do some wireless playing with this either live or in your home yeah so that's kind of cool we added the wireless receiver um we don't think everybody's going to want to be wireless right this is still kind of a desktop amplifier um so like right now i don't need to be wireless i'm kind of sitting right here with it that's an extra add-on they sell them at sam ash do you do what you got to do but but get it because it's kind of a cool thing why not? And yeah, another thing that we've done, and how you're going to hear this, is now we've given you quarter-inch outputs on the back side here. So now I can take a quarter-inch signal left and right and feed my mixer. There you go. There's your back panel. Left and right quarter-inch outputs. It still has a USB connectivity, so this still is can be an interface. You'll get a free download for Cubase AI, which is kind of a cool thing. So, and there's let, more. And there's more. And you get a, a free set of Ginsu sh uh, knives. Really? Um, Tell us what it is, Mr. Popeil. Yeah. <laughs> Ron Popeil. What's the story? Um, USB out on the back. Power, uh, re re power on the back. The other thing that we've done, though, and this is very, very cool. Now we've put in, where'd the battery box go? rechargeable battery so now this thing has become a truly wireless cableless sort of enterprise i want to go practice in my backyard thr32 comes with me um wireless capability bluetooth rechargeable batteries quarter inch out a little bit bigger more power kind of stage worthy now um and available at samash.com thr-230 is the power on this one so i mean it's, it's you guys are thinking of everything you're putting everything you can into these amps well the cool thing about it it's like and a little bit of a background on this product it came out of our home audio division That's we, weren't, we weren't planning on making a desktop amplifier 10 years ago you guys at Yamaha, you can pretty much... That's the amazing thing about the Yamaha company. Forget Yamaha music. They pretty much make everything great, whether it's an instrument, a motorcycle. I mean, you name it, they can do it. Um, so it came out of our home audio division. They came to us and says, well, we've got this thing kind of like a digital boom box, but we don't know what to do with it. And we're like, can you put guitar sounds in it? <laughs> so sure enough, this, that's why the fidelity on this thing is pretty darn spectacular. Um, and remember, on, on the top of every THR is you get an auxiliary input with its own volume control. So they make a great music player. The one I have in my workshop mainly gets used. I pl plug my phone into it as opposed to firing up the big stereo. So it, it's a kind of a two-headed monster as far as a play-along capability as well. Um, that's all THR right out of the back of the amp. I don't have the front of the amp on. All that delay, that's right out of the amp. So I do want to clarify two things. Yeah. Uh, one, what you're hearing Andy play is as great as it can be. Now, keep. I mean that because he's playing an amp. It's going through a mixer. It's going through the internet. It's getting compressed <laughs> to your speakers, and then you're hearing it. So if you're saying that's not how I expected it to sound, it give it a little bit of slack. I mean, come on, guys. 
you got to hear these things in person every time. Anytime you hear a product in person, it always sounds different than when you hear it online. But seeing as we're hearing it online, it sounds pretty darn good. Uh, sounds great in my headphones right now. I mean, it's one of those things that I don't know if you guys can hear it in stereo at all. I got a little chorus on that effect. So Evan was wondering there's no delay, but technically there still is. And we just want to address, if you look, there's echo reverb. Yeah, so on those two those two dials there, and you'll see the, how they're kind of graduated as I as I turn them. So if I turn that effect dial, that chorus from little effect to a lot of effect, that's always the way the uh, THR has always been, right? That original THR was the same way, little to a lot. Right. Now with the app, I can go in and deep dive in those effects. So like, I, you and I are stomp box people, right? We have a I have a hundred stomp boxes in a closet somewhere. That's just a shelf of all my help. <laughs> so when I look at the 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 echo and the uh, are the I get a tap tempo function, I get time feedback bass and a mix control that I don't get on the top of the amplifier. So, so get, that yeah, it gets dense. That app really unlocks a lot of the power uh, that THR two has in it, right? And how much is that app? That app is free, my friend. That's right, guys. So there's no not to get this amp and then get involved into all of those features. Yes, you can enjoy the amp as is, but if you're one of those guys like me that you have to have some tap tempo thing going on with the amount of feedback and all that, that ain't going to cut it by itself. So I highly recommend if you got some, now is it just for iPads or can you get an iPhone? Can you get it for Android? Do you happen to know that? Uh, it's now, and, and thank you, uh, Yamaha, it's now Android capable, right? Being such an Android guy, I do happen to have this on my iPad here, but uh, Android and iOS. So for, perfect. So you got a free app that lets you unlock all of the potential with these apps. But if you didn't have that stuff, if you don't have a smart blank, get this. It's still a great app and you can still play around with the Echo and it's, just a lot of fun. But now with the rechargeable battery and the wireless capabilities, Ben, this thing is really, I'm going to go stand out and go praise the trees, right? I can, I don't have to be tethered to an AC outlet. Oh, I, I don't have to worry about re filling. Do you have extra batteries? No, it, we rechargeable now. So we kind of gave it those modern upgrades that it was kind of sorely needing. Uh, but that's THR2, three different flavors, a 30, a 20 watt, a 10 watt. And how, and wait, how long more things come battery in. life, though, if it's fully charged? It depends on volume, right? So I, I can go right. pretty quiet at about eight hours. If I'm really rocking the thing, it's about four to five. Still not bad. Not I, bad at all. I, look, if you're playing outside, like a busking gig can go for a while, but I'd be impressed if anyone's playing guitar for four hours straight. So No, my neighbors wouldn't allow it. Yeah, even at its loudest, though, you've got a lot you can do with this. You can crank it at home and play for your to your heart's content. Um, so to me, it's 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 guitar amplifier. It's interface, right? USB. Right. This becomes all my guitar processing and my monitoring, and I can run this right into my computer and fire up my Cubase, right? right here. See, I work all the family products in and fire up my Cubase, and this will recognize it as the interface. Um that auxiliary input makes it a great simple music player, right? It is true stereo. So when you plug your phone in or other music device, the playback on it's fantastic. It's ported. So it gets yeah. good, rich bass out of it. Um, and then that portability factor of being now I'm not tethered now with wireless capability. Now with more power, 30 Watts, I could take this to a gig, right? The old 10, yeah, the old 10 watt. I don't, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable taking 10 Watts out of my, my office. <laughs> the, 30, the 30 watt i certainly would the app makes it all the more flexible um and they're available right now from you guys i think you guys have them in stock we do we have i mean we carry the whole line and we've got it in stores we've got them online if we don't have it in a store it can be sold to you online if we got don't have it online it can be sold to you from a store so either way we will find a way i and again i can't verify if these are out of stock like it says on the site just want to show be honest it says out of stock but like i said uh we're trying we're trying to get everything updated because of uh like when covid hit we were trying to get everything situated as far as inventory and whatnot so some things may say it's not in stock when they're yeah. actually in stock 
So and a little bit on our side too is it certainly it, it's a global pandemic. It hit our factories. We right. had certain factories that had to kind of cut back. Uh, most of our factories are now back up and running at a hundred percent. But there was a little bit of a lapse in in some product shipments that we had coming out. Um, I was just at your Sam Ash store in Ontario Mills the other day and said hi to uh, hi to David and to the rest of the guys and to Chris and noticed that our inventory was a little depleted so your business has been good yeah I was about to say, slow on our side to replenish so so hopefully. yeah if anything the reason we don't have it in stock is because everybody who could yeah. buy it bought it and we're just waiting on yamaha which is nothing against them i'm telling no. you they would if they could they'd overnight this stuff but everybody's kind of sitting in that same boat so we thank all our all the customers for your patience and everything um and i also want to reiterate that um what should we call it with these amps when we have them in stock and i've been saying this in every live stream as of late buy it asap because we're at the end of september we're about to be in october in less than a week i bring this up because in a month from october it'll be black friday and after black friday it'll be the holidays and all those come real quick and this is where i'm just reminding you whether you're buying something from sam Ash music or not hopefully you're buying from us but the fact is you might want to get your music gear ASAP. It doesn't matter what it is, but we like, for example, if you really want these, get it with the Samash credit card or get it with the progressive leasing. We have multiple financing options so you can wow. get these products, but get them while you can. Call now because also if they're out of stock now, they will be in stock. So I highly recommend you just call someone, talk to someone at the store and just say, hey man, I just saw the live stream about the THR32. I really want to get one. Do you have them? And if it's yes, You'll be walking out the door. If not, they'll say, okay, we don't have it yet. But when it's in stock, you'll be the first person I call and you'll be able to pick it up and you'll have it ready for the holidays or for whatever you need. But that's actually, that's actually a really good point. And I think this year is even a little bit more, way more important than it has been in, in previous years. Yeah, My time when I was on, on the retail sales floor, I would always start dropping Christmas hints in September. I'm like, do your shopping now. Don't be here in December because it's too crazy. It's too busy. We run out of stuff. Yeah. Do shopping in September, October, November. Don't wait. We and all we can. that parent that comes in on December 24th and goes, yep. what? You don't have this in stock? My child is going to be upset and it's your fault. And it's like, really? It's our fault that the day before you didn't have your gift for your kid because we didn't have it in stock because everyone who was in here in advance got it for their kid. Yeah, so, exactly. And with the, um, with the supplies guy. the way they are, don't wait. Don't wait to December. That's just if foolish. You, I was a procrastinator many years of my life. Thank oh. goodness for my wife because she is the most active. She gets her stuff done ASAP and she's yeah. instilled that in me. Don't be one of those people that disappoints someone on the holidays because the thing you wanted to get them wasn't in stock. And again, this could apply if you're buying something at Walmart or Target or Whole Foods or whatever. Not that Whole Foods has anything you need that soon in advance. But regardless, I'm just naming places. But um, if you're going to shop at Sam Ash Music, we always say buy in advance. Yep. It's always, especially like we just said, inventory is completely unpredictable now. Not just from Yamaha, but from everybody. We try to have everything in stock, but it's not even Yamaha's fault. It's sometimes the shipping companies don't want to play ball. It's sometimes the factories don't want to play ball. Yamaha's doing their best part. We're doing our best part. We want you guys to have the gear. We want you to be rocking out with these amazing desktop amps and these Revstar guitars. So and remember, gu guitars under Christmas trees are impressive looking gifts because the boxes are really big. Not just that, but if you don't have the box, if you wrap it up, it's kind of <laughs> obvious what it is, and that's always fun. Oh, did I get a bike? No, you didn't get a bike, Timmy, but I think you'll enjoy this that much more. Um, but in any case, uh, I think we're at the end of the hour, but I want to make sure that we've addressed everything possible. Um, is there any, if you guys are watching, or gals are watching, or whatever you uh, consider yourself, if you person have a question or a comment, we're here to answer them for the next few seconds. And uh, while we're waiting for those questions and comments from you all, Andy, is there anything we may have glossed over about the Rev Star that you want to preach? Something that makes it truly outstanding beside, like, what what are you getting from this that something maybe in its price range uh, it competes with in a better way? Like that, the like if you get a Rev Star, you're getting more this, that, and that, that something else's price range, you're not getting this, that, and the other. 
That's what I was kind of, when I mentioned that earlier, is like, I always think that with our guitars, and I always felt this even before I would work for Yamaha and when I was just selling it, you're getting way more guitar than what you're paying for, right? So you're getting a great build quality. You're getting, um, you're getting attention to wood. You're getting attention to detail. Um, in the acoustic guitars, you get stuff like the acoustic resonance enhancement. You get SRT electronics. You get you know, you get YGD Yamaha guitar development design pickups. We just didn't want to take an aftermarket pickup and put it in here. We decided that we knew the best how this guitar was supposed to sound. We love Seymour. We put his pickups in a lot of guitars, right? I think your guitar has Duncan pickups on it. But with this, it's like, no, let's take a little more attention to the detail and let's wind our own pickups, right? So all the Rev Stars are, the pickups are designed by us. It's a standard pickup route. So, I, so if you wanted to put somebody else's pickup in there, we're not going to get offended. All these people are our friends. You're doing it's good for the industry. Yeah. But once again, it's like we there's an attention to detail that goes along with what we do as a company. And this kind of goes across synthesizers, keyboards, outboards, golf clubs in Japan the interior of your Ford F-350 pickup truck, that burled rosewood that goes around the, the dashboard is Yamaha hardwood. So there's this Yamaha quality that comes down. It's kind of vertical integration, right? It's, it, it's the, the top of every division of what we do as a company. And we're kind of driven that way as we're directed to, is that as good as it can be for the price? Can we make it better? How do we improve it? If you're the player or the customer, what do you need from it? Um, back of the back of the headstock, right? The little volute on the back right there. I'm trying to prevent all those headstock breaks that happened with um, G-branded guitars from back in the day, right? That little bit of extra wood right there gives that extra stability, but that's that attention to detail of what Yamaha has done uh, as far as learning from its past to make the modern guitar better than it ever had been before so i mean you guys have been in the industry over 125 years so you've been through every possible iteration of what can we do better and yet as the world keeps turning there's always something new to explore so that's a testament to you guys that you're always searching you haven't it's 100 over 125 years and you haven't been like all right we're done we figured it all out this is it nothing to fix here no, I think that's when companies kind of wither and die is when they think they're in. And, you know, I just looked at a thing of global sales numbers for all MI companies worldwide. And we're bigger by three times than our next competitor, right? In global sales, you know, band and orchestra dwarfs what yeah. I do, right? You think we sell a lot of guitars? Think about how many trumpets. Think about how many marching bands. Think about your university in town. Is that Yamaha equipment? pretty good chance that it is heck i was in um i think i talked to you or somebody i my wife and i if you didn't know sorry guys, I see was going right there all, but i'm also <laughs> a huge disney fan so if you didn't know i love disney i've worn this hat in other live streams before and i actually have two disney hats we love disney in this house but the reason i bring it up is if you go to disney 99 percent of the gear i see being used is yamaha like there's um like there's those places where their bands will play at epcot there's a yamaha kit yamaha keyboard yamaha guitars yamaha bass wouldn't doubt there's yamaha mixer yamaha we are the official musical instrument supplier at least at disneyland and maybe maybe for walt disney world as well but we've had a, a long-term relationship right because we're only about our headquarters is only about five miles from the disneyland park Right. So they've been kind of a great partner with us as far as being able to outfit their um, their performers and their artists and their bands that go through next Monday. Right. The park is still closed. We're still kind of uh, in the red zone or whatever that means as far as with COVID. Um, Disney's open. Which one are you talking about? Disneyland. So here in Southern California, Disneyland, I think, is still closed. Um, So they only opened up the Florida park. So next Monday, you'll I'm going to make it jealous, Ben. You know where I get to go next Monday is I get to go to Disneyland and restring guitars. Oh, rough life. Yeah, Yeah, I know. So this is kids, what you can do with mediocre talent and the ability to talk on camera. You could have a, you could have a career playing guitar for your, I mean, come on. It's not work. 
Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> play. So while we've been chatting about Disney, we've gotten a few <laughs> comments and questions. Um, so Paul, if you missed this, Tom, one of our fellow Yamahaians, wanted to clarify: firmware is updated via USB. Yeah. So if anyone else is wondering that, don't worry about it. And also, this is an interesting question. Paul wonders: Do you guys sell the pickups out like st after market stock pickups, or is that something you may consider? We don't market them, you know. And I'm not—I don't want to open up a can of worms and saying, "Hey, call Yamaha Parts." Yeah, don't do that. Um, it's it's one of those things that we never wanted to be in the pickup business, but we always knew, right? We're we're a sound company. We always know how our guitar should sound. So that was why the thing is like, let's just start winding our own pickups. Let's design the how we think. And right, all the all the Revstar pickups. German silver base plates, form var wire, as we really made them uh, with the, the best of our ability. So um, I don't think they're for sale aftermarket, but but here's what you know, I would say. buy a used Revstar and, and take the pickups out of it. But he, I see the irony is you said it earlier that you make pickups designed and wound for the specific guitars. So yeah. it almost seems like it would defeat the purpose if anyone were to take like you said, pick, take the pickups out of a Revstar. Sure, you can spend $800, $900 on a guitar if you really want the pickups out of it, which is granted a testament to how great the pickups are that Yamaha makes. But the pickups, which every guitar company does that with the pickups they make, mm. is they make pickups to make the guitar sound better as it is. Very few companies just mix and match stuff. There's a purpose to the pickups they choose for the instrument because of the wood quality, because of the build, because of, like you said, the bridge. So like Andy said, if you love the Yamaha pickups, you're probably also going to love the guitars. Yeah. And any guitar can be set up however you want at Sam Ash Music store locations, but you can, that's what's great about these guitars. Is and that, I think what we're doing is I think next month we're going to get into acoustics, right? We're going to, we'll do this yeah, again and we'll do it on acoustic guitars. And you'll see in our acoustic guitar world is we don't use anybody's aftermarket electronics. Yeah. They make their own. And who's who's going to tell us how our guitar should sound? It's, it's gotta be us. And there's we, a technology you guys developed. We that, make a really good sounding guitar. So we know how it should sound. But I remember there was an AM show. I went with my dad, <laughs> yep. Sammy. And you showed us, I'm not going to mention the model because I want people to be surprised when we do the thing. And I said to myself, that's nuts. Like that phrase, I was like, what? And it's very cool. This one piece of technology, it's not just a pickup. Um, it's not, it's more than that, yeah. but that's for another episode. So uh, with all that being said, I think we covered a lot of ground. Uh, we're a little past the hour. I think, and like I said, if we kept talking, we'd probably be here till nine o'clock at night. Yeah. We don't have things to do. But Hope we didn't bore anybody out there. It's just two dudes kind of talking guitar, right? So we want to do doing? We want to talk about acoustics, maybe even revisit some other Yamaha guitar bass. We, we may do one on just basses. Who knows? Would but, love that. Would love yeah. that. Because once again, it's a good chunk of our business. It's a good chunk of Sam Ash's business. And you guys always have our bases in stock too. So if you're by a store and you want a, an alternative to what everybody else is telling you, you should play, right? This is what we're talking about. It's way more punk rock to play what you want to play and that an instrument that has your voice coming out of it and, and a different name on the headstock than what society tells you that oh, you should be playing this it's like the good remember the guitar's got no music in it right the music's in our customer the music's in us so if you find the right guitar that allows the noise to come out of your head to end up coming through a speaker or through a thr or into your headphones that's the right guitar it doesn't so matter what the headstock says before we go though because yeah. i think we talked a lot about these I'd love to hear more tones out of the amp. Just yep. click through some stuff, show how varied you can get, and then maybe we'll sign off from there. But in the meantime, don't rush. Play some stuff. Show all the different nuances you can get out of it. Tell us what you're doing. So what I did um, bef before we got on today is I built five presets in the amplifier. So what we have... Um, and Ben, I don't know if you want to Let's see if I can get this to kind of come down a little bit. Um, there's five presets that we can do in the top of the top of the amplifier, right? So I can actually build my own channels. You can see right now it's on channel one. So what I've done is I want a nice clean channel. Oop, hear that? 
that delay, that's all coming from the amp. Now on, on two, I want a little chorus effect. So once again, these are preset sounds that I've programmed into the top of my amplifier. Looking at my app, my app has changed to the, pro, the second program. And I don't know if you're getting stereo through uh, StreamYard or not, but in I my have, headphones. No, no stereo yet, but we trust well, you. Ugh, the chorusing on this is just lush. And I hope you can hear that over my dog's barking and outside. So all those effects are naturally on board, right? So once again, through my headphones, out the USB, um, or through the speakers, I can get that. But it will also go... <laughs> So I can do that clean. I can do the extreme all in one box, right? And those are all my my user programmability. So once again, as I've taken my amp, now I'm on user preset five. And the green indicates that I'm in the modern setting. But it's so very, very cool now that I can have right on the THR30 wireless. Now I have 23 sounds that I can access. Very responsive to what the my, my pickups are doing too. So if I as that guitar comes up, the amp will get gritty and dirty and it, everything that I love out of a tube amplifier. Same thing with this big guy, right? Same thing with the THR one hundred. What I love out of it, it's got this tactile sort of give and take to it. Um, grew up being a tube guy, right? As you are, Ben, we all have a dozen amplifiers in the house. But I never had a digital amplifier that could do what THR100 does. So what THR100 does to me, is it has that give and take that I get out of a tube amplifier. When I honk on it, it wants to bark at me. When I roll down that volume control, it wants to stay nice and pretty. So what I loved about this was everything that I needed out of my tube amp, plus a whole nother second amplifier in one box, programmability, XLR outs, all that other cool stuff for the price of somebody else's small combo amplifier. I can actually get uh, five amplifiers. Five. Well, I think we figured out it was a hundred different settings I can have uh, before I even go into the the USB software uh, and do some deep dive editing and stuff like that. So once again, I think Yamaha THR is where it's at. Right? THR two is the new version of the desktop amplifier. THR 100 will allow you to get all of that flexibility into a portable. This head weighs nine pounds. We give you the foot switch with it. Two by 12 cabinet we make. We also make a 112 cabinet as well. Now, the cool thing about the 212 cabinet, when I'm running in dual mode, as you can see the two lights on right there, when I'm running in dual mode, each amplifier is going to its own individual speaker. Benefit being, that dirty clean thing in my room, it's now coming out of the right side here. My dirty is coming out of the other side. So the nice thing is I really almost have a true stereo rig out of this one head. So I thought, Ben, that that was a kind of a cool product for the fact that I didn't necessarily was looking for a desktop amplifier when I found THR, but I was always a stage or studio guy and always needed that power. So to me, kids, THR 100 is your your top secret weapon. Un <laughs> Can I sing you a song about my feelings? Can you? Oh, I would never do that to you.
because it's kind of dark and depressing. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But in any case, that is a lot of amp. That's a lot it of is. guitar. And the combo is a lot of options. So all of these products and more Yamaha products in the musical spectrum of things, because we do not sell the mic, the motorcycles or the jet skis. But <laughs> not yet. For a guitar, a yep. saxophone, an amplifier, pretty much anything with the Yamaha name on it that is music gear, we got it. Just call us at Sam Ash. You can either contact us at samash.com, call us at 1-800-4-SAM-ASH. You can visit any of our locations where we're practicing social distancing, cleaning down all the gear that's being touched, and uh, only allowing a certain amount of people in stores at a time. We're trying to do everything to keep you, the customer, safe. We also offer curbside assistance if you don't even want to go into the store and you just need a pack of strings or you need some simple stuff, but you don't want to run in and risk anything. But like I said, we're trying to keep things safe. But on that note, um, Andy, is there anything you want to say before we we head out? Just thanks for your friendship and you know your dad. And I love the whole family and a bunch of knuckleheads. Likewise, and I'll let them know the same. <laughs> and on that note, uh, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in this week and for this day. Uh, Yamaha appreciates, appreciates you learning about their thank product. You. We appreciate you tuning in to learn about what we sell. Uh, again, you can contact us in multiple ways, social media, phone, text. We're here to help you on your musical journey. I'm Ben Ash with Sam Ash Music. Thank you, and we'll see you at our next show. Take care, everyone.